Hey, it's Doodle Bud here today. We're going to be looking at some high-end, expensive pens that might be on your radar. I'll chat a little bit about them, point out some pros and cons to each, if that will help you with your decision-making process if some of these are on your to-get list, and also maybe answer a little bit, are these pens worth the price point? Because let's face it, these suckers ain't cheap. Speaking of cheap, you can actually get into the pen hobby pretty damn cheap. I mean, we're talking 2 or $3. Some of them work exceptionally well. Some are rip-offs and are pretty terrible. And some are kind of that in-between we're at. It's not too half bad and it works pretty good for the 3 bucks I paid. And then, of course, you have some very popular pens that you see around that maybe now you're going to drop 20 or $30 on. And in exchange, you get a pretty well-made, reliable writing pen with lots of options and nothing wrong with that. And then, of course, you have the opportunity to spend a few more dollars, maybe not quite break the $100 mark or just over. In exchange, you can get some really beautiful looking pens that are now super reliable, a little bit better materials. Some you can get lots of options on and the sucker just performs every time you pick it up. There's also the pens that are much lower cost that can look like a very high-end pen and you go, well, I can never afford this thing. That's just too much for my budget. But in exchange for maybe a tenth the price or something, I can get something that looks pretty damn close, works pretty well, and that's good enough for me. However, as good as some of these pens may be, we're not talking about those ones today. Today, we're talking about these ones. These are the ones that they are just much higher price point than the others. It's a definitely a level up. We're talking gold nibs on all of these premium materials, some premium features or filling systems as well. You got one or some of these on your list and you're wondering, is it worth it? Are some of them not worth it? What are the pros and cons? Let's see if I can help you through that process today if any of these are on your radar. One thing I want to remind you out of the gate that spending way more doesn't mean that your life will change the writing experiences beyond anything these offer. These are some pens I feel that are absolutely fantastic, mega reliable. There is nothing wrong with them whatsoever. And for the price point, wow, you're getting a hell of a deal. But let's go through these and gather some thoughts. So first up, Let's talk about some usual culprits that we see a lot of. The Lamy 2000, I did a huge deep dive on this pen, took like a big engineering dive two-parter on it. I think for this price point, the Lamy 2000 is a phenomenal pen. Uh, as far as the design goes, we've all talked about this. It looks super cool. The materials, you got a gold nib, the build quality, all that stuff on here is phenomenal. Piston filler, nice little ink window, gorgeous snap cap action. And I've never had this pen misfire on me at any given time. It's just such a workhorse pen. And I think the value proposition, like what you're paying for the price of the pen, is very, very reasonable, especially with the performance and nib options that you have as well. What are some of the things you should just maybe know of before you get one of these? Because you hear a ton about this pen. Some people absolutely hate these. I They don't bother me at all, but if you're a high gripper or just whatever... Um, you can grip wherever you want. Some don't like how it slopes down. They feel their fingers just fly off and it's super uncomfortable. You know, my style, how I hold the pen, it's super, you know, I like it. These don't bother me at all. It's very comfortable. There's no issues whatsoever. But for some, they absolutely loathe that part as well. My only gripe with the pen is just the nib point sizes. So this is an extra fine, but this is so much wider than your standard extra fine nibs that you would get on other pens. So I just wish for the Lamy 2000, so be aware if you want an extra fine, you're starting off at a fine, almost a medium with some other nibs. So if you really want that kind of needle point, super fine line that you experience with some other pens, you might have to get it ground or just understand it's not going to be as fine as you want. And for those who typically go with a broad, you probably want to gear it down a bit. The nib sizes do run wide on this pen. This is the retro kind of vintage version of a very popular pen that is nowadays modern, the uh, Pilot E95S. This is the Elite from the 70s, but the E95S is just the modern version. I absolutely love the vintage one. The modern one just didn't do it for me, but I've heard nothing but great things about the E95S. Great pen, just looks cool. Dimensionally is awesome. I Like I said, I prefer this finish on the vintage ones works super well the pen is mega reliable someone just commented the other day i think it was on my instagram how they picked one of these up after they saw my review 
and they've never had a nib be this fine but also be this smooth so the writing experience on this nib is fantastic uh, it even has a little kind of softness and bounce to it as well which is really great. Now these aren't in a really uber expensive category. I think I picked mine up for maybe about $120 or so. So that, you know, the $100 price point can be a significant barrier for folks, but it pales in comparison to some of these ones in the background. I think it's a very reasonable exchange what you're getting. It's a fair price for a great pen. It is small, so you should know that just by looking at these things and uh, seeing them online. You know, here's a Pilot Pereira just for comparison. So maybe for over $100, you want a bigger, heavier pen. That is not this, but I think it's pretty obvious. It is a really nice pen, though. Super reliable, and I just love... This is now one of my absolute favorite pens. As far as filling, yep, yeah, it's going to be a cartridge, a little squeeze converter, or the Con 50, sorry, Con 40 uh, converter that fits in there. So maybe that's not your cup of tea. But if you want a great performing pen, I would recommend this. Or I've heard great things about the modern E95S, so I'll just roll with it and say that's a great pen as well. The Pilot Custom 823, no doubt, is a mega popular pen, a big stepping stone pen if you want to step into drop and maybe over that 300 or kind of dollar mark depending on your market where you're getting it from this is you know gets brought up 100 percent of the time for everybody it is very very well made uh the styling yeah it's very classical kind of japanese styling on their pens you might want something with more flash but this is a ton of class it is super well constructed i think very tastefully done uh, you know, you got a beautiful gold nib on here as well that looks wonderful. Haven't had any challenges with uh, wetness or anything at all. It's ultra reli reliable. <laughs> Every time I open it, the pen writes perfectly. It is not hard started on me ever, not even once. Can't say that about the Wingsung 699. Works not too bad, you know, looks very close. But I do have this thing have issues with uh, supplying ink every now and then. Uh, and But for this price point, that shouldn't happen. And this has never happened for me. Uh, the only thing with mine, and I, I think this is a real outlier because it, it sounds like this almost never happens. It's just my nib. I don't like the feel of it so much. It's a fine. I understand sometimes they're ground different, but this was just flat out kind of bitey almost on the page. So I didn't care for it. I have smoothed it. It's better now. Suits my style better, but it's still... I just think I got a bit of a bum nib with this one, so I might even just send it off to get it reworked. One thing you might not like is just from cleaning the pen out. It is a vacuum filler, and that happens with all vac fillers, is if you're the OCD person and everything has to be super clean, get all the water, all the ink out, that might drive you nuts. The workaround is just use your favorite ink on this pen all the time and just refill it when it needs it, and the cleaning issue is out of there. But as far as performance, materials, is it worth it? Yeah, I don't have any problem recommending this one. Keeping it Japanese, we have another Pilot. This is the Custom 912, and in this case, it's got the FA nib. So the FA nib is that super flexible nib. Is it a modern nib that's just as good as vintage flex? I don't know. This thing really has some nice flex to it. I've done a review on it. had a Friday Flex Off uh, video I've done to kind of compare this pen with others. I'm going to do an updated one with some of my vintage flexors and some other modern ones. Just uh, have a bit of a showdown if you're in the market for flex. But the pen itself is really great. Built really well. Again, the style points on here, it's your traditional type, type of pen design. Nothing too flashy with it, but that's okay. If you want flashy, this probably isn't for you. But if you want a flex nib, and a modern pen, this will definitely be on your radar. Um, I will say out of the gates, do yourself a favor and upgrade the feed. Now, I understand in, uh, you know, depending where you're buying this pen, characters are different, writing styles are different. I'm bumping the camera here nonstop tonight. So the stock feed could be totally fine for certain characters. Um, but over here, North America, I'm up in Canada. When we sort of talk about flex, there's a certain expectation for how it should perform and the fine to wide ratio and speed and strokes and all that. And uh, it's kind of widespread known that the stock feed can't really keep up to that demand. But you can go into the aftermarket flexible nib factory, sorry, flexible feed factory. They have custom uh, made ebonite feeds for different pens. This one included. There's a two slit or three slit version. Mine has this three slit version. And this thing 
definitely keeps up with flow. So that problem is resolved. It's got the Con 70, decent ink capacity, very simple pen, uh, but it's really with this pen, it's, it's all about the nib. Uh, I do feel it's a bit unfortunate. You have to, well, you don't have to, but if you want the full performance, you definitely do need to uh, fork over. And it's not cheap. I don't, I can't remember if it was 40 bucks or 50 bucks or something for the feed. So that's an extra cost out of the gate onto the pen to sort of max out what it can do for you. But in return, you do get a lovely, well-built modern pen. And if you're going for the FA nib, it flexes a bunch and has a great feel to it. So again, lovely pen, but uh, the feed thing, I wish that was fixed by Pilot themselves. The moment I found out a pen could do this, I realized <laughs> I kind of have to get one of these. This is a Lyme Dialogue 3. I guess this was probably my first Grail pen. I saw this at the Vancouver Pen Shop. One of the ladies who works there pulled hers out and just went, swing. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I had to get one. So this is mine. This is in the, the uh, matte black finish. Um, I think it looks super, super cool. It does fit my hand. It, it is a large pen. It's quite heavy. So I know for a lot of folks, this just will not work for you. You need a, a reasonable sized hand to do it. Not massive like mine, but you do need a bit of a larger hand or I could see this being uncomfortable. But it's just got some cool engineering behind it. You rotate it, the clip sucks down. And it just sort of comes out of nowhere and the focus, gosh, it's going to kill the video. But this little door that opens up, you can just, you know, you can see yourself in the reflection and it just comes out of there and just like magic. This is really what the pen is all about. Just doing this all day long with the pen. I, uh, I got this originally with a medium gold nib, the smoothest nib I've, I think I've ever owned, the, the 14K Lamy medium. But it just didn't suit my writing style. And so I changed it, got the extra fine, and got it in the different series that has the two-tone. And for with this matte black, I think that really sets it off quite nicely. And I ended up grinding this one to uh, a, a sort of an architect, the best you, you could do really with an extra fine. And it's got some cool little line variation with it as well. Super neat pen. Is it perfect? No, it definitely has lots of little quirks to it. Um, you know, the filling is a little bit involved. I guess this is sort of like a pilot vanishing point or some other pens. You got to take this out. You got your converter or cartridge, which is, you know, that's handy. And you fill it by driving the piston up and down. When you take it out to clean it, um, if you want to get a bulb syringe in there, it's tough to really put the tip of the syringe into the feed. So you kind of kind of plug it with your hand and then, then squirt it to clean it. So, um, a little more involved for cleaning and stuff like that. But this is a pen where you're essentially willing to make some of these sacrifices uh, to put it into a pen that looks so darn cool and write with it. And uh, it's very appealing. It's <laughs> For an engineer like me, it, it has that cool factor to it as well. It does dry out a bit. It's not um, like instant. There are some inks. I don't like using sheening inks in here. I find those dry out the quickest. So just get one that doesn't have those type of properties and then you don't really have too much of an issue with dry out this isn't going to be a pen like some others you can leave them um you know inked for months and never have a problem uh so you know just be aware of that this is one little thing too that when you extend it great you come back there is a little kind of detent to line it up but you can just go past it and it unscrews so that is one thing that might drive you a little bit nuts too Again, you do make a few sacrifices with, you know, maybe positioning or potential for dry up or ease of cleaning just to have one super cool looking pen. And I know there's a, a release of a new version of this as well. So maybe check that one out if you're checking this one out. Another German pen. We're talking Pelican. This is the Pelican M805. This is beautiful. It's got that blue version. Um, there's multiple colors you can get. There's also the M400, 600 series, the 800, then the, the M1000, the ultimate from Pelican. This is such a gorgeous pen. It has class written all over it, but also precision German construction and design and engineering that go with it as well. The nib is absolutely beautiful. I paid a touch extra. The M805 standard comes with the one-tone um, I guess palladium coated nib. This has the two tone. So I did a little bit of an upcharge with cult pens. I wanted the two tone, but I didn't want the 800 that has the gold trim. 
if I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. There was a sale on they had, plus I had a coupon code, so I, I sort of timed it right, except that, especially with exchange rates. Piston filler, which is quite nice. It does have these um, lines in between that you can sort of use as an ink window, but you really got to hold it up to the light, so I don't really use it that much of an ink, ink window. It's not as functional as other ink windows out there for sure, but it's all about you know, dropping some coin on a premium pen and it's flashy, but you'll be happy to know this thing performs. I haven't had one issue with a hard start ever since I got the pen. Uh, again, these do run a little bit wider. I don't find as wide as the Lamy. This extra fine is, a, is more like a fine, maybe a medium fine, but super smooth. Very, very, very smooth nib. It's never hiccuped, you know, hard started, missed a beat at all. Works exceptionally well. Um, you know, great styling. The clip is functional. Just everything about it, really, really well made. One little thing I do notice, it's a quirk, is sometimes if the pen, even in your pen case, is sitting there for a while, you pick it up, let's say it's been sitting for two weeks, it's going to write perfectly, but the cap could be just a touch loose. You'll pick it up and go, oh, it's wiggling. Uh, I've never had it fall off or anything like that or pick the pen up and it was just dangling, but instead of it being snug, it might be just a touch loose. So maybe that's something... Um, I don't really over snug, but if that's the last time I'm going to use it, give it a little extra. You worry, you don't want to wear it out. But that is one little anomaly with this pen I found, and it happens, is it just, it's a touch loose sometimes. So lot thought I would share that one with you. But before I do the kind of top of the heap pens that I have, we're going to switch over to vintage really quick, just to kind of highlight these as well. So there are some absolutely gorgeous vintage pens you can get. We got the 149 on the back. But obviously, mega expensive, out of reach for, for a lot of folks. So you can, you know, do yourself a favor. Maybe look up if you want to get a Mont Blanc pen. I haven't had any problems with my Mont Blanc pens. They've all performed exceptionally well. They write great, and I really enjoy them. You can go vintage. So this is a vintage Mont Blanc 24. Really looks nice. It's actually very, very similar to a Lamy 2000. So if you like a Lamy 2000, you probably would like one of these types of pens. Great little pop cap as well. Ink window, piston filler, hooded nib, very much like a Lamy 2000. This one I in particular grabbed it because it has an oblique broad nib. And this pen is probably one of the best, if not the best writing pen I have. When that nib hits the page, it's a little finicky because it's oblique. You got to get it just right. I can use it unposted. I can use it posted. It looks great. But when this nib hits the page, even though it doesn't look super amazing it just it glides and your writing looks gorgeous so this is a very very enjoyable pen and i think for the price point you're doing not too shabby plus you get to swing around the snowflake and impress people these modern high-end pelicans ain't cheap some of the vintage ones are very expensive as well but then there are some of these vintage pelicans that I think are a really, really nice deal. This is a vintage 140. Mine has the, uh, a f I guess it's a fine or almost extra fine nib on here, but it has some lovely spring to it. It's got some nice flex to it. It is probably actually my favorite of my flex pens. It's just a very natural writer. Again, it is small. It does expand to be a lot larger. That is one thing with the vintage pens. They aren't as, as large and bulky. But I've learned to work with pens that are smaller. I used to only like really, really big pens with thicker sections. They had to be sort of 12 millimeters and that, or, or that's it. But now that I've gotten used to other pens, and I've explored some more. I actually write with this one quite well. And then the experience off the nib is great. The piston filler mechanism is fantastic. Is it as flashy as the new one? No. Does the nib is cool? It's a much smaller nib. But this nib never lets me down. Ebonite feed, like you could just see it's always wet. It's always ready to go. Uh, but, by the way, every now and then I pick it up and the cap will be a little bit loose on this as well. So that's, I guess, I've been a design flaw that's been around for quite some time. But very reasonably priced for what I feel you're getting out of these. Especially if you can find one with custom nibs like Obliques or, like in this case, a nice flexy one. I think it's a, a steal of a deal if you're looking for flex and maybe a brand or whatever it is don't forget your vintage pens back in the day some of the styling was just really unique and just gorgeous even till today and this is my schaefer pfm this is the version 5 uh, super classy i love that green with the gold you can see these little fine lines here that are rolled into the cap as well just a great looking pen. Mine's used. It was in kind of beat up condition when I got it. I did a restoration video on this if you want to check that out as well. Only flaw with this one, 
is the dots pushed in that does drive me a bit bonkers but that was part of the deal with the price i have shined it up i think my hands are a bit greasy right now and it's polished up quite nicely and then you reveal this absolutely beautiful inlaid nib uh, this thing writes wonderfully this is one of my best writing pens as well coincidentally it's vintage it's you can sort of catch the theme here it's got a really funky filling system you can check the video i've got ink in here don't want to do it now uh, maybe i'll go just a little bit here you turn the dial and out comes the snorkel and then this will come back you plunge it so it does have a sack in there i know you might not like that with the vintage style pens you got to replace them and service them that is one thing with these but then it goes away and there you go you filled the pen up so a totally unique filling system beautiful inlay nib works wonderfully and i gotta tell you i, I absolutely love this pen this is one of my tops not as expensive as some of these top of the heat pens there you see in the back but uh, they can be quite pricey for a pristine pristine one if you feel adventurous you can get a deal uh, put a little elbow grease into it maybe change a few parts sets you back an extra maybe 30 bucks but then you get a wonderful pen that operates lovely and there's some reward in going through the restoration process as well so again another lovely vintage example so i showed you some vintage pens that i feel uh you know much cheaper than the modern counterparts and you can get a great deal on them but there are some vintage pens that are super expensive this is kind of an entry into that brand omos this is a great example they have some that are an arco and the uh, the Omos 360 is a pen I absolutely adore, and there's many of these other ones, but some of them are in excess of a thousand dollars, which is just it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. So this was a way for me to get into there. Still, this thing is mega expensive, but it has this beautiful little nib, very unassuming. But let me show you what this thing can do. So here we have this just absolutely wonderful and wet and juicy omas flex nib and it just keeps up very natural you can see those tines just going down but bouncing back this thing just doesn't let me down at all and it just yeah it lives up to the expectation on the writing experience for sure however that being said uh this little pelican 140 let me just show you what this can do and this sucker is probably maybe a third of the price of this one possibly even less So as you can see, they both write very well, very similarly. So what's the deal with the super high price on the Omas versus the Pelican? Well, first Pelican is still around. They're still making pens. Omas isn't. So there's that collectability factor to it. You just, you know, they are rare air. They are limited. Um, they're just not going to make these anymore. The company isn't even around. So some stuff just becomes a higher price point because of branding or naming and, and collectability. That doesn't mean that this isn't a lovely pen. It works quite well. And for the price point, you know, you go, well, is this worth three times the price to have a very similar writing expense experience? From just writing experience, I would say no, but holding value, you know, appreciating in value that more collectability, if you want sort of both of that, yeah, pay the extra money. You'll have that with this Omos. One last little chat on vintage before I get into the final two pens I'm going to chat about here in the background. So this is a vintage Parker dual fold. I've seen the new ones. I'm not so much of a fan. Saw this vintage one. I thought this looks great and will be a fun little project. So again, you can get a vintage one much cheaper. Uh, I've taken this pen apart now. Now it's just going to be time to clean it. Uh, polish it up put a new ink sack on it and a new uh filling mechanism this is a button filler so i had to get some parts for it so okay you spend maybe i don't know 10 15 dollars or something in parts a little elbow grease and now you have a pen that if you bought this fully restored in in perfect condition that you can get it to doing yourself it could be you know again tripled the price so there's always that way if the brand new shiny one is just out of your price point you can look at vintage but even a fully restored vintage one could be out of that price point there's always a way you know typically to find something especially with vintage find one that's a little beat up maybe you'll sacrifice 
the impression isn't as deep as you like or whatever it is, but you can get that same pen, learn about it, take some pride in your work and wind up with a pen that now maybe you've doubled or tripled the value just by putting some love into it. Rounding it out, we got these two pens here. So we have a Mont Blanc 149 and here we got a Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. And this is the older one with a 23 karat palladium nib. So both these pens I picked up secondhand. The brand new price on both these pens was just way, way, way more than I would ever spend. I got them for about, I would say about a third of the full retail price if you bought these new. So that made it more palatable for me. With this one here, I knew out of the gate there was some issues. The uh, the seller let me know. There was a couple little ink stains on here. That didn't really bug me too much. But the big one on here was the nib. Had some serious babies bottom. And the pen would just hard start like crazy. Which, at this price point, new from the factory, should not even happen. But it does. Getting mad about it doesn't fix it. Although, if enough of us got mad, you think they would. But uh, yeah, so major issues. I, I did get rid of the baby's bottom. It flowed great, but the this uh, fine nib was nowhere near a fine. It was like a medium to potentially broad. It was a fire hose for ink control. I delayed and delayed and delayed, but then I finally sent this off to Mark Bacchus to get this nib fixed, you know, ground down to the point size I want, which was kind of like a fine, extra fine with some nice little bounciness that this nib naturally has but also reduce the flow and now i am absolutely in love with the pen again it just feels so great in the hand this uh this resin that they use it's a great size cool filling system and just look at that like <laughs> styling they did an amazing job on it um qual you know the qc on these yeah they're just not up to snuff for for this price that you're shelling out but you know, I had to swap out the feed on my Pilot 912 with the FA nib to make it perform properly. And that, you know, about the same price as what I had to spend to get this nib fixed. And I, I got to tell you, it was worth every penny getting that. If I paid full retail price for this pen brand new and it acted the way it did, I would be absolutely fuming and furious. I got a significant discount, had to pay a few bucks more, but now it is writing the way I like it. And, you know, I just absolutely, <laughs> I love this pen now. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Just because you pay big bucks, depending on what you're buying, doesn't guarantee that you can get as reliable a pen as this silly little $3 zebra pen that, <laughs> that works perfectly, comes out of the package already to go with ink. And this thing has never let me down once. So this pen shouldn't do that from the factory, but it did, it's fixed. Now I love it. And this is just a wicked pen. The Mont Blanc 149 possibly gets on everyone's list at some point, or maybe one of them, maybe that's the 146 if you want the smaller one, when you'll learn about it, it's got that kind of status symbol with it and the brand and all that. But I gotta tell you, as a pen, this thing actually <laughs> works. Again, this works fantastic. Uh, it did need a little bit of work to it. This is a old stock, old new stock. And uh, when I talked about this pen and my top three pens for Apple Boom, I thought maybe that's the reason why, because uh, it just, it really hard started quite a bit. It was a bit scratchy. So maybe that's why it was new old stock. People tried this pen out and were like, I'm not paying that money for that pen. Get me a different one. And they grabbed a different one in stock and that pen worked great. So there just could have been a challenge with this pen or a flaw from the factory. So again, I got this pen for about a third of the price it would be if this was brand new off the shelf. I felt okay with that exchange. Got the pen in and was disappointed with how it wrote. Uh, I sent it off to a Nibmeister. This is the first person I ever sent a pen off to here locally in Canada. Don't want to name the, the name. Uh, and it was a terrible job they did on the Nib. And so this pen was actually sort of a blessing in disguise. I figured... If someone's going to screw up a nib, I might as well do it, and I'll do it for free. So uh, I learned how to grind nibs and tune them just so I could get this pen writing the way I wanted. So it's a fine nib. Uh, I wanted something special with it, so I ground it. Whoops, sorry about that. This is now like a fine, and it's got a nice little cursive italic feel to it. So a little bit of line variation. Let's get you close in there 
on those cross strokes just to give a little bit of a flair. You can't go crazy, but again, I absolutely love, whoops, this pen. I thought I would take just a moment to give a little bit of a better writing sample. So this is the Mont Blanc 149. So yeah, I really like the performance on this nib. It, the, the fine cursive italic fits my writing style. So it gives a little bit of a flair, still great for printing, but gives, yeah, you can just see it's a little bit of a thick and thin. And this pen, again, has never hard started, never let me down. The full price, I don't agree with. The price I got, I'm very happy with it. Here is the Visconti Homo Sapien as well. You can see it's sort of an extra fine with a nice little bounce with it too. Again, you get a little flair for printing, a lovely writing experience, a little bit of natural bounce, not a flex. Again, new, I would not be happy that the pen performed the way it did. It's fixed, I got a massive discount, I'm happy with that. Here's that little Pilot Elite. So again, a fine nib, but it is a lovely writing pen. Here is that Mont Blanc 24 with the oblique broad I was telling you about. Just looks great, works great for printing. You can rotate the oblique nib to make it almost like an architect or a cursive italic style nib. The oblique writing looks great. And then this is that little Pelican 140, some nice little flex there as well. In a talented hand, it looks even more amazing. So do you have to spend really big money to have a great pen? Absolutely not. You can get lots of great options at a ridiculous fraction of the high-end price. You can even just get really cool looking ones and then get a neat nib. This has a stub on it and this stub has never let me down. This pen performs nonstop all the time. Looks cool, you can get different colors. That's the Gravitas Sentry, by the way. And there's many other pens that are out there like that around that price point. But if you are looking to spend a few more dollars, here's some thoughts I had on the ones that I've spent a few more dollars on. Some, again, were a little, well, very disappointing out of the gate, but now I absolutely love. You might have to tweak the odd one here or there. Little nitpicks that I showed you on some of them. But all in all, I am very pleased with these. Is Are there any perfect pens? I don't know. What is the perfect pen? Will you ever find one? Maybe it's the next one. And maybe one of your next ones you've looking at are one of these. So hopefully I've helped you out, put things in perspective, point out a few things or some thoughts to have. But all in all, I've been happy with the money I've spent on those pens. And I enjoy working with them and writing with them. We're just taking notes. I also enjoy you watching my videos, leaving comments, hitting the subscribe button is neat. Appreciate it. We will catch you next time.